What's up guys, CB Money here back with another video and today we're taking a quick look into our gaming series once again and asking the question, can you game on five year old mid range video cards? Now as I do make videos, not a day goes past when someone messages me or emails me, tweets me or really whatever platform they do message me on saying that they have a trash PC with like a GTX 770 or an R9 290, how I should be giving them an upgrade to their systems and how their computers are just too old to play any video games and that really got me wondering well can a five-year-old set of video cards actually play any games decently or is five years a little bit too old now for me personally in my desktop pc i do run two geforce gtx 660 video cards mainly because my time is spent doing 3d renders making videos for this channel and a lot of other things and just doing more content creator type of applications where the cpu is way more important than a video card so for me i just have haven't seen the need to actually upgrade as I don't play games as much as well I guess I'd like so a video card isn't necessarily a needed upgrade for me but then they got me wondering is my video cards really that bad compared to a lot of new things on the market today and how much performance do you lose after five years of well using the exact same video cards so for most people out there PC upgrade cycle will be two maybe three years as that usually allows for a complete new architecture change to come through the lines thus giving you way better better performance. With companies like Nvidia and Intel and even AMD releasing new architectures in that kind of time frame, the value definitely comes there. And for some people that upgrade cycle may be a little bit longer like 3 to 4 years so you can definitely see a much bigger jump in the gaming performance and I guess also to performance in general of their new system. But what about a 5 year old system? So 5 years ago I built my first gaming spec PC. I built other office types of computers that I'd used in the past but I've never really been into gaming until about five or so years ago and in that particular system I grabbed the GeForce GTX 660 Gigabyte Win Force version in fact I think I did a video way way back in the day about this card which really wasn't the best video but either way uh, was a decent card at the time coming in at about $250 which is definitely a far cry from the $400 plus dollars for a 60 class of video card today the gaming performance in this guy wasn't exactly the worst but definitely did a fairly decent job at it. And it just so happens that as time went on I slowly upgraded my PC and the video cards wasn't really something that was holding me back. But let's take a look at what I've done to that PC. So in terms of the CPU we are running an Intel Core i7-5820K at stock speeds for reliability and video editing, 3D renders and that kind of stuff. Sure I could be getting more performance out of that chip but stock speeds means no crashes and I really do value no crashes because if you're 72 hours into a render and then it crashes because you were trying to save an hour you're probably not going to last very long there. So stock speeds are for me. I've got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and the aforementioned two GeForce GTX 660 Win Force cards. Now yes taking a look at these shots the cards do need some cleaning up and there is dust everywhere but they still work and will take a look at the system. Now again as I did mention this system is rather geared towards the CPU side and again that's mainly because I spend just about all my time on the computer doing some sort of content creation. Again for the YouTube channel, contract jobs, some basic kind of stock video, all of that kind of stuff is more reliant on the CPU rather than the GPU. However with that being said in recent months with something like our new camera and also to all the new uh, 4K workflow that I have been working with, the video cards do start to feel like they're slowing me down a little bit but let's take a look at how they do perform and jumping into our first set of numbers BAM here we go now yes these games are running maximum 1080p settings and they're really nothing that great. Games were hitting around the 40 FPS mark, the lag spikes were through the roof, and it really wasn't that great of an experience. The 660 was maxed out, the i7 was idling, and taking a look at, for example, this number from GTA 5, from something like a GTX 1050 Ti from this video right here, we can see the 1050 Ti beats out the GTX 660 on the exact same settings. Damn, that's a bit of a problem for an older video card. Now with that being said, if we drop these games back to medium now, we actually see a lot of the games become way more playable, hitting well over 60 FPS, and some even hitting over that 100 FPS marker. In recent years, that's where I've really been finding myself playing games in kind of that medium 1080p range, as the cards still deliver a decent gaming performance there. Though again, with that being said, something as simple as a 1050 or even 1050 Ti 
also two offers very similar numbers. And speaking of that 1050 Ti, the only real benefit of going with the GTX 1060 over that card is a few more CUDA cores, slightly higher memory bandwidth, and a few more texture units. Overall, the 1050 Ti on paper definitely wins out here. And if we go ahead and compare something a little bit high spec like a GTX 1060, or even the 1060 3 gig, we see a much bigger jump here. Now, whilst I don't have full numbers on those two cards at the moment, we can definitely tell that the 660 is definitely starting to get quite long in the tooth. But back to the question that we wanted to answer with this video. Can you game on a five year old video card? And honestly, yes, you can. You can game medium settings, 1080p, and if you didn't mind dropping below that kind of 40 FPS marker, you could even do ultra and max settings, 1080p. However, with that being said, you do need the CPU that can support this kind of stuff as CPUs from the time like is also too getting a little bit long in the tooth. But if you are looking at 60 class of video cards from the 660 family, they're nothing too bad in today's market. But again, for the same prices you would have paid back then, you could grab something like a 1050 or 1050 Ti and get just about the same performance with all the mod cons that come with new video cards, like lower power consumption, all the new technologies, and just way better driver support. With that being said, if you are looking at stepping up to something like a 670, 680 from that kind of more top tier market, you would also to be seeing much better numbers in the maximum and ultra lineup. But all in all, can you game on it? Yes, you definitely can. Sure, not to the point that you might do with a newer and more modern video card, but it is still very, very playable. Not to mention there also too are other drawbacks of older cards that I didn't really sort of mention so far, like noise is definitely a problem, heat is also to another problem. But if you've already got these cards and they're doing the job for you, they're really nothing too bad here. Though on that note, I don't exactly recommend buying an old card like this. If you're tossing up between grabbing one off eBay and buying a new card, honestly for about $200 for something like a 1050 Ti, it offers way better performance than something like this guy in a lot higher settings. And even again, the same settings, it does deliver much better performance. And taking one final look at those numbers, it just seems that old video cards well, are starting to show their age at that five year marker, but it is still technically usable. Otherwise, guys, with that being said, let me know what video cards you are using down in that comment section. If you want to check out some other video cards that we have checked out recently, although none have really launched lately, which is a bit of a problem, you can find them linked down below or they should have been popping up right there. Otherwise, guys, thanks all for watching and I will catch you all in the next one.